and we'll see you next week. Go Bengals. <laughs> Go buy bread and milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that. <laughs>
people can go out in the foyer and uh, look at the different top life groups that we have here at the church. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be reemphasized this year, and I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to focus on the message, I want to hear from you guys. What's something that stood out to you? I think for myself, uh, there are several things. One is we need each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, no man is an island, right? We say it all the time. And uh, you can try to go through life secluded or alone or, you know, you don't want to venture out, you can get hurt, whatever. Yeah. I just have to think of times in our own lives where we uh, were so grateful for people, godly mm -hmm. people in our lives that could speak into our lives and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's super important to not mm -hmm. be an island because yeah. we, we cause that on our own to be – I don't want to. I don't want to step out. I don't want to yeah. be vulnerable. You know what I'm saying. So um, that's kind of what stood out mm -hmm. to me. And then obviously, who better to have in your boat than Christ? Yeah. Um, I mean, even though he was sleeping in this instance, <laughs> he was still in their yeah. boat. And even while he was sleeping, he got up and calmed the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing better. Yep. That's right. I got um, really caught up in the story that he gave, at the, that Pastor Don gave at the beginning of the sermon um, about the man who invented the safety brake for the elevator. Yeah. And the visual of this guy who believed so much in what he was selling that he put his own life on the line to stand mm -hmm. on this elevator. Um, he was selling a safety brake at a fair and to prove that it worked, he um, stood on the top of this elevator and had called for them to cut the rope, which is where he got the title for the sermon. And when the elevator gave way, the safety brake um, kicked in and he was fine, he was safe. And in our own lives, when we believe in something so fully, like we mm -hmm. do about the Lord, um, when he calls us to do something, we're, we can put our lives on the line and just go into whatever he's calling us to do, even though yeah. it seems completely crazy mm -hmm. um, to others but we have that confidence in who God is. Yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah, something that stood out to me um, was just that, that thought, I didn't even realize it, that there were other boats in the, mm. in the storm as yeah. well. And just like that idea that we are all in a storm, mm -hmm. but it just depends uh, how you survive the storm, all, all depends on who's in your boat, and right. it has to be Jesus. So. It would be interesting to me, and I know Don mentioned it on Sunday, it would be interesting to me to know if any of those other boats survived. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe they went down, you yeah. know, before, <laughs> before he calmed the storm. Mm -hmm. right. It was a very yeah. interesting thought that yep. I hadn't, hadn't come across before. I was like, no, yeah. That, re yeah. that really shocked me. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. But well, yeah. like when the water, when everything went calm, do, you know, looking around, it's like, do they know where that... Mm -hmm. You know, looking over at the what boat where Jesus that? is, do they know that that's where the power came from? I don't know. Yeah, it's an no, it's, thing. it really is. It really is. And even like in our lives today, like when when Jesus calms our storms, mm -hmm. you know, do other people look at us in our boat and be like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, that, I think it came from over there. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so. It's like a ripple effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally on the water. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's something that stood out to me. I think yeah. it's really good. That's good. All right, so the scripture that we're going to read comes from Mark 4, verses 35 through 39, and it says, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. That's good. So the first point that we're going to talk about with this whole uh, message and going along with that scripture is who you do life with affects how your life goes. And yep. it's, it's an obvious saying, mm -hmm. but uh, it kind of hits home to us with this. Um, so the, the um, part that goes along with it is these past few years have made us examine who we are in the boat of life with. We firmly believe that the church family is and will be our only lifeboat in these current storms. That is why being involved with each other outside of Sunday morning is important. Life groups are a way to help us understand we are not alone. The disciples were in a storm, but they were in the boat together. 
We're all in the same storm, but we are not all in the same boat. Let's all jump into a boat that will be, bring true life. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's uh, vital. I know I already talked about it a yeah. little bit, and we'll kind of we'll mm -hmm. continue to dig into it here a little bit. Because um, the discussion question that follows that then is, Share about a time when having godly relationships in your life affected you in a very positive way. And I'll just go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I were talking about it a little bit as far as in our own lives. Mm -hmm. I was a preacher's kid. We both drew, grew up in, I mean, since we were born. Same mm -hmm. with you, in, in a godly home. Mm -hmm. And I'm super grateful for that. Um, On top of that, we were in church three days a week. And we even were at christian school right so we were just surrounded by that influence. by the godly influence yeah. and, and it's not something we take for granted right um because it, it was to this day it's it's been super influential mm -hmm. in our lives yeah. of course um but one of the things that i had to think about i had to go back a ways to think about this was um my own father mm -hmm. who obviously played a huge role in my life um and one of the there's two different things that i thought of one is um when i was 20, 20, 21, something like that. We had just gotten married. And um, my dad, who I worked for at the time, lost the farm. Um, we had a big farm, and he lost the farm. And it was a, I mean, it was a, it was a tough time for us. But the thing that was interesting is he chose to not uh, file bankruptcy. He said, I'm not going to do that. I still owe people money. And for the next 20-plus years, he worked on paying those people back. And it was... Wow. I mean, it made such an impact on me because, I mean, I, I heard some of the people that he owed money to when he finally paid them back, they're like 95% or 98% of men would have just filed bankruptcy. And I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's always stuck out in my mind. But then there was another time when he was still farming. We went to a big farm show in Louisville and um, we were at a tractor pull. And they do like these raffle things at the tractor pull. Mm -hmm. And he won lottery tickets. Like, he, he could go down and get a whole, I don't remember, a whole bunch of lottery tickets. I don't know how many it was. But he, uh, he, just, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. He had a conviction in his heart against that, against um, yeah. playing the lottery and whatever else. So he said, no. Looking back now and knowing the financial strain that was on his life, he obviously could have used money. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, that's not who I am. And so when I think of godly influence in my life, I think of so much of my upbringing mm -hmm. like that. And I'm yeah. super grateful that I can fall back on that even now yeah. at times where... Um, well, and I think with him in particular, that was his personal conviction. And he had that easy way out in both those situations. Right. Mm -hmm. But because of what his personal convictions were about that, um, he lived in integrity. Yeah. And did yeah. what he heard God calling him to do, you know. Yeah. Right. So that was obviously a very, uh, god, a very powerful godly uh, relationship in my mm -hmm. life. So, and that's so good because someone like him, his personal convictions mm -hmm. really influence yours. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and his personal convictions weren't dictated by whatever the surroundings were. Yep. They were yeah. personal. Yeah. Convictions. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the great decisions you made today have been based off what you saw there. Absolutely. And it goes back to that saying, you are who you hang with. This is yeah. true. And then on the flip side, if all, you, if all you've seen from people around you is the complete opposite of that, mm -hmm. you're probably going to do that. That's probably what you, you, what you revert to. Correct. Yeah. 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 And I think it's something that we've talked to the youth kids about so many times mm -hmm. about who you are around affects your, you know, are you going to be a leader or a follower? And it's this balance between um, uh, being an influence mm -hmm. or being influenced, right. you know. Um, for myself, when it comes to godly relationships and how they've affected me in positive ways, um, I've had, you know, like you said about church, school, I mean, our whole lives. And there's so many different, I can think of so many names right now of people who have influenced me in positive ways. And I'm so grateful for um, all of those different relationships. It's really hard for me to just nail down one in particular um, above the rest. But I do have to think about, um, it was 15 years ago when we decided to leave the church we went to previously. And even though we left with good relationships and on good terms, 
it's just you know when you're at church or at a church those are your relationships those are who Mm -hmm. you do life with for the most part and stepping out of that was a really lonely season and it helped me to realize how much those relationships really do matter Um, that's why i love the whole idea of the top life groups and how um, you just start building relationships with other people and it's it's your go-to when you need encouragement when Mm -hmm. you need um, maybe sometimes you need help with a situation or something like that but um, i i've seen families go through devastating losses and if they're in a church, you know, the church coming around them and supporting them in that mm-hmm. way. And I, I just, I wouldn't want to be without it. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I agree for sure. Um, I mean, I'm in the same place as you guys. Um, you know, I've been raised up seeing a lot of great godly influence, um, but it really hit different when I moved away to college. Um, that's when I really started um, finding uh, people in my life that they had the similar passions, similar convictions mm-hmm. in their walk with God, and it really inspired me. Mm-hmm. And I saw a difference in my own life. When I was here, you know, in high school, um, I didn't have as much great godly influences. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I saw that in my own life. Mm-hmm. And then me going out to Bible college, I met young other men who were just on fire for God too. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I saw a change in my life happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was really a really amazing, amazing um, season that God placed mm-hmm. me in where he like placed people in my life that with the same same age same struggles yeah same uh, goals mm-hmm. and everything we would um, fight for that together mm-hmm. right and actually when I, I've been thinking about this today I think that's what really sparked the vision I had for young adults group mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where I was in this young big young adults group Bible mm-hmm. college Mm-hmm. where we're all the same age going through the same stuff and then we we know how to respond the same way mm-hmm. you know we were always there for each other and then my senior year of college you know uh COVID hit mm-hmm. and we had to uh, lock down our college um and i had to come back home and that was very tough very tough right. you know um but I, i've said it many times on the show before but i feel like like by god's grace um i was in a great place uh spiritually Literally, the, the week of was one of the best weeks I've mm-hmm. had. Like You know, like mm-hmm. you can think of those moments back in your Spirit life where it's like, life. okay, that season I was really, I was really like, I don't know how you say it, like I was really in tune with what God mm-hmm. was doing. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I come back from, um, from college, COVID just hit, and then um, all of my friends had to move back too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Tyler was already here, but Colton had to move back and some others, and... You know, I just kept I get I kept hearing from God say this isn't this is this is an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't see it as an opposition. Right. What can you do with with what's right. in your hand? Right. All you have is yeah. all you need. Yeah. Right. So you know that summer, um, I was always, always with Tyler, Carly, Colton, Ethan, and you know I just kept going back to that man. I missed that community mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I had at Elam. Mm-hmm. You right. know, and I'm just like. It doesn't just have to be at Elam. That can right. happen here. Yep. Right. Yep. So we all just decided to start this young adults group. Mm-hmm. And it's been an amazing blessing here at the church. Yeah. It's grown. Um, we've had like, I mean, in terms of people who call themselves like part of the young adults group, easily 40. Wow. Mm-hmm. And we average about 20 to 25 every mm-hmm. week mm-hmm. and that we meet. And it's been a blessing. And anyone in our young adults group can attest to the truth that having each other. Right is has made a great impact absolutely yeah Um, there's just something about belonging to something yes you know people Mm -hmm. you look at it in all of society there's clubs and there's Mm. gangs and there's you know there's cults Uh there's all these different things that people can belong to and -hmm. there's just something that create god has created inside of us as humans that we want to be a part of something Mm -hmm. yeah and so it's it's a great thing when you belong to something yeah we're relational no, yeah, 100%, that's, that's 100%. True. And uh, trials hit different when you're with a community. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because because like there are seasons where you are down, you are in your lowest low, mm-hmm. but the person that you're doing life with, they're at their highest high, right. and they're going to encourage you. Pull they're going to pray for you. They're going to say, hey, get up. You're called. You're chosen. Keep moving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there's nothing like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because, of course, God speaks to us. He right. is there with us, but God speaks to us through other people in our lives. Mm-hmm. And it's to prove that people might be listening and saying, oh, community is important. So tell me why Jesus chose to walk with 12 people. 
Mm -hmm. right. Because right. if community wasn't important to Jesus, right. it would be a one-man show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul's thing would be a one-man show, but there was always a community right. changing the world. Yeah. So that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And fear can hold people back from stepping out and getting to become a you know becoming a part of community like that's that. True. And that's part of cutting the rope is just yep. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm just gonna dive in. I'm gonna try this, and you know trust God for the outcome. Yeah. And see where He takes you. Yep. One hundred percent. All right, so the next part of this question is we underestimate our authority in Christ because we fail to understand our identity in Christ. Mm. So God has given us full authority here on earth. One way we can walk out this authority is to walk with other people who have that same authority. And that's part of the reason why life groups are so important. We need each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this, this was really good. Yeah. I love the part about God has given us full authority. Um, it also says he's given us all authority. I love the word all. Mm -hmm. I and mean, when you think about how much all is compared to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the opposite, you know, yeah. we, I, it's something I've been praying about lately is like, God, what, you know, like when I get to heaven, what am I going to look back on? What can I see? You know, all of that. Mm. But what would be the regret hmm. as far as like, man, you could have gotten through life with this authority, but you didn't latch on to that. You didn't, yeah. you know, you didn't take full um, authority of what God had given you access to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know to me, it seems impossible for us as humans to fully comprehend that here on earth, mm -hmm. but I don't want to miss out on it. And so it's something that I pray about often, like God reveal it to me, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then to be with other people who are like-minded yep. and um, who walk in faith. Um, that's one of the things I loved uh, I keep talking about youth group, but it's who we hang out with. So um, we've done like the spiritual gifts test with the youth kids and the ones that test high for having the gift of faith. I, I don't know why I, over, I remember, I remember those. And mm -hmm. so then when it's, we're praying for somebody in church, I, I'll find them and I'm like, mm -hmm. you need to come and pray yeah. <laughs> for this uh -huh. person. So. No, it's, it's really true. Cause it's like, man, uh, like that, saying is like show me your five close friends and i'll Correct. show you your future right. mm -hmm. you know it's like that's mm -hmm. usually towards that negative side of like man if you hang around the wrong people it's gonna be different but like but it can be super positive. it can be super positive and right. powerful absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely with all of that talking about all those things with um being with like-minded people what are some of the benefits that people can get from getting plugged into a life group. We call them top groups here at FFM, mm -hmm. which stands for Together on Purpose. So that's why you hear us mentioning top groups mm -hmm. once in a while. I'd say one of the biggest things is food. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> that's the only reason I come to youth group. Yeah. I mean. So the day of the life group fair, you're gonna go out and you're gonna walk around and just pick out the good cooks. Why not? Yep. Sign why it not? up. Oh, she she doing live group? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I'm on their team. Yeah, yeah. You know they're all old, Tim. I don't care. <laughs> I think for myself, other than the food, mm -hmm. um, one of the thing, one of the biggest reasons is can be accountability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got these people that you're doing life with and if I'm acting stupid I'm doing life with you I want you mm -hmm. to call it out mm -hmm. yeah. you know and say Tim that ain't right mm -hmm. so I mean that would be a big one for me would be the accountability thing I think accountability is so important in our lives yeah. mm -hmm. um, obviously just simplest things is friendship um, a lot of people don't have uh, that community where they can just go and hang out with somebody it's surprising to us how many times that happens that they may not have a lot going on. It's hard for mm -hmm. hard for me to wrap my head around, yeah. but they just need that friendship. So right. that this could be an opportunity for that. You had mentioned it earlier, and I had to think about it too. Is sometimes it's even a thing as far as assistance. I need help with something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. I break my leg. I'm in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Guess what? My life group may say, "Hey, uh, do you need help with something?" Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need my I need my lawn cut or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and they come out and and surround me and say, hey, let's go help them out like that. Yeah. Um, I just think there's so much that can be, I keep going back to the no man is an, an island thing, because that's actually my tendency is to be an mm -hmm. island. I, I want to be independent. But I realize that um, that's probably, I'm not going to reach my full potential mm -hmm. if I am an island. Yeah. And I need, sure. I need that community. I need those mm -hmm. around me. Yeah. One of the things I enjoy doing is, you mentioned assistance. I love working for a common goal mm. with a group of people. And um, it's been a while now 
since three other women here at church, we, um, I don't have any sisters. Ironically, they all do have sisters, but um, we were talking about it one day that, you know, like how the Amish women will come together and do a, a little working project together. Mm-hmm. And so they're my Amish sisters now. <laughs> and every month we go to one of our houses and we work on whatever project that person wants us to work on. Mm-hmm. And I love that. It's like we've been having great conversations and we have some good memories and it's building it's building up a friendship that we didn't have outside of that. Um, so I think that's wonderful. And even another thing is... Um, Even just while sitting here, I already got a text from um, a friend who, there's a family in our church that went through a loss this week. And so there's women that are coming together. They want to put together a care package so that they can just reach out and show Mm. love to these people that are going through Mm -hmm. this loss. And that's another huge benefit. Absolutely. Not true. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I agree with everything you guys are saying. One thing that I've experienced from being in a life group is uh, learning from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, what's great about the body of Christ is people have different strengths, people have different gifts, mm-hmm. and uh, we can learn from each other right. in that. You know, so like uh, me as a young um, newlywed, mm-hmm. I'm doing life with other, you know, newlyweds or people who've been married longer, and at our life group, through discussion, I can receive some wisdom from my friend yeah, absolutely. Yeah. who's uh, who's been married just a little longer, mm-hmm. and I can go to him for prayer. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, at, at our live group, a uh, quick plug for young adults group, um, <laughs> every Tuesday at 630. Uh, we take time at the end just to pray together, mm-hmm. just in groups of two or three, mm-hmm. and just to pray together. And that's probably my favorite part because mm-hmm. I can... It, it just hits different when you bring up prayer requests and you know that people can relate. Yeah. Right. Where it's like, mm-hmm. man, I'm just having I'm having this struggle with, in my marriage, or I'm having this struggle, you know, building my finances, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. being almost broke. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But just to have like-minded people, not only give you wisdom but pray with you mm-hmm. in that, man, there's nothing like it. Right. Really, nothing like it. So right. that's it. Another thing I said is like real friendships, mm-hmm. like genuine friendships. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one thing I faced in my life is just the, how do I say it? Um, You know, there's seasons where you're very close to someone Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that season comes to an end, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, there might be hurt that comes from it, you know? But like genuinely, um, it's it's hard, it's because I'm so involved with my church family Mm -hmm. and because I'm plugged into a life group, majority of my time is going to be with the people who sure. I just happen to do life with. Absolutely. Right. So it may be harder, mm-hmm. you know, to reach out to other people. And of course, mm-hmm. reaching out to other relationships are important. Absolutely. Right. Um, but the true fact is like, I'm naturally following Christ mm-hmm. and the other people are naturally following Christ with me. Mm-hmm. So they happen to be going out to get food with me all the time mm-hmm. because we just got done doing a worship night. We right. just got done doing right. a prayer night. So right. it's like, I think that that can be seen in like mm-hmm. church culture with yeah. cliques and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like the natural reality is mm-hmm. because we have we are like minded people. Mm-hmm. Right. We have the same goals. Right. It's like I want to surround myself with people who are like minded. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so so that's something that I've, yeah. you know, thought. Well, about. and I think even inside the church, um, I think about it like when we're getting ready for the youth retreat. I mean, then our youth leader thread is going a lot more mm-hmm. or we're getting ready to go on a mission trip and we're yeah. texting all the time about that and then pretty soon we're rolling into the summer and it's time to start talking about vbs and suddenly mm-hmm. i'm texting with doug and nancy like every day like multiple yeah. times a day <laughs> and then that season passes and we're moving into the next season and it's getting close to christmas time you know and so you do have opportunities to work with different people in the church at different times of the year mm-hmm. and that's also another thing where you know you mentioned um, grabbing a bite to eat with a group of people or um, being accused of being in a clique or something. Mm-hmm. We tend to be with the people we work with. And yeah. so I think um, if, we can fe- if we feel lonely inside of the church, the best way to not feel lonely is to volunteer your time. 100%. And it's it. amazing. Like, I know we always talk about helping in children's ministry, but when you get to know people or get to know people's kids, you're going to get to know the parents. And it's just the quickest way to get to know people. It's true. And the thing is, too, is that sometimes just being involved, um, even though it may not look exactly like what you you think it should look Mm -hmm. like, I think of softball. Uh, We have people in our church because of softball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just being involved in something. 
I mean, softball. I remember the first time I saw a softball ministry, I'm like, yeah, softball ministry. Absolutely. It, mm-hmm. is, a, it is a ministry. Absolutely. It's been, uh, for myself, when we first started coming, that was one of the first things that we did. We did FPU and we did softball. Mm-hmm. And it was huge for us. Got mm-hmm. to know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And um, We wouldn't and, have our junior high youth leaders if it wasn't for softball. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what I'm talking about, how important that it is. But the other thing is, is, just like the cut the rope thing, sometimes it's uncomfortable. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I've never been to their house. I don't want to go to. It's going to be awkward. It's gonna, yes, all that. You, you know what? too many kids. Yeah. <laughs> Step out. Step out. Don't. No, I don't, agree. I mean, it's, it may be uncomfortable the first time or two, but it's the beauty of relationships. You yeah. push through that and you, uh, you begin to develop that. And I think of it yeah. so often as far as church life can be so much like a marriage. If you're willing to push through and not give up, mm-hmm. even in mm-hmm. the hard times, you're going to get to deeper and deeper levels of vulnerability and intimacy, but that makes your relationship that much more special and beautiful. Yeah. 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 And I know for myself, like I, um, the relationships that I've had inside of the church, whether it was from, we've been here 15 years now, um, and the church that we were at before, those, those relationships are still special to me mm-hmm. as well. And obviously I, I see the people here on a regular basis, but those, those relationships I wouldn't want to be without. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's who we do life with, and mm-hmm. it's, it, it's something I value. It's important, yeah. for sure. No, yeah, and you guys are really just um, taking it home to our uh, call to action. Mm-hmm. Every, every week on DTS, we end it with a practical application. So Absolutely. it's like... All right, uh, we just finished this podcast. You know, now what? You know, mm-hmm. what? what is something we can apply? And it's a very simple one today. Today's call to action is uh, get plugged in. Yeah. yeah. Get yeah. plugged in, whether it is a type li- top top life group here at FFM mm-hmm. or uh, getting plugged in, in in ministry. Right. Absolutely. Like if you're in a place where you desire the Lord, you desire to walk out the plans and purposes uh, that he has for you, but you feel alone, mm-hmm. there is a community waiting for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what that looks like uh, uh, specifically for you. You know, maybe it's um, maybe it's a group to the Amish sisters over here, <laughs> um, group to you know, make them quilts or something. No, or, no, no, no. Or, they were uh, scrubbing office walls this week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so clean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Much more fun. Um, maybe it's uh, joining the worship team. Maybe it's yeah. coming to Young Adults Group. Whatever it is, we encourage you to get plugged in yeah. because there's something so uh, godly and uh, beautiful about community hmm. yeah. and that's important and that's like one of the biggest reasons why we come to church on Sunday mornings it's why we take the time to talk about this is because we've been mm-hmm. impacted mm-hmm. Uh, greatly yeah. tremendously right. by a godly community yeah. mm-hmm. and it's not just for us it's for you as well yeah. Yeah. no matter where you're at so we encourage you to get plugged in today and watch God do amazing things and I just want to put one quick plug in for this Breno's going to drop something in the comments or whatever it is you do mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't know this yet yep we I do don't. have something on our website for the church if you're part of ffm that um where you can sign up for opportunities to volunteer um it's not a commitment to volunteer it's just showing the areas you're interested in volunteering whether that be um, youth groups or being a greeter or working with the ushers there's every opportunity that we have here at the church and um So we'll get that link put up for you as well so that you can just fill that out. And then in the future, if there's a need in that particular ministry, then they will know they can reach out to you. Yeah, that is a great idea. And I will be doing that. Surprise! On our video. (laughs) I have and told him. Yep, she can do that to me. (laughs) She's my white mom. Um, All right, uh, with that being said, can I pray for us as we close out? Great. God, we love you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your presence, dive into your word, and learn more about you. Uh, God, thank you for community. Thank you for uh, the great benefits that come with getting plugged in and volunteering and joining a life group. Whatever it looks like practically, God, we know that community is powerful. Mm -hmm. And I pray for those who are listening and maybe struggling with finding community. I pray that you can lead and guide their steps in that Mm -hmm. and that they can find true friendships and true relationship of like-minded people. God, we are all in a storm, but we know that there is a boat available, yep. and that is through you, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So we choose you today, Jesus, above all else. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you guys so much yeah. for yeah. joining me. It was, it was a great conversation. Yeah. Super good. excited to see what comes out of it. Yeah. And for all those of you who are listening on the podcast channel or YouTube, thank you so much for joining us here at DTS Deeper Than Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. 
and uh, we're going to keep doing this. It's been a great uh, ministry opportunity, and we just hope and pray that this continues to impact you guys' life. So with that being said, thank you for watching this week's segment, segment of DTS Deeper Than Sunday, and we'll see you next week. Go Bengals! <laughs> Go buy bread and milk. <laughs> I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that. <laughs>